G'day Reefers, my name's Anya and welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. We're going to start a new series all about propagating corals and today we're going to focus on Corallomorpharians. I have many favourite corals. Corallomorpharians definitely are one of them. This is an order that covers quite a number of different families of coral that are generally blanket termed by the name mushrooms. That's in the US, but here down under, you may notice we actually call them morphs. It does make sense to us because we tend to shorten everything. So for the purpose of today's video, I'm going to interchange between the word shroom and morph. You can see here behind me is my stash tank and I have chosen to feature quite a number of different corals in the order Corallomorpharia. We have Discosoma down the bottom here, um, also some Rhodactus and right in the centre we have Recordia Yuma. So one really fascinating feature about the order Corallomorpharia is the different methods that they asexually reproduce in the wild. So I've got some awesome models here to talk about really briefly the five different ways that Corallomorpharians asexually reproduce. So I decided to use Play-Doh to demonstrate the five different ways that Corallomorpharians reproduce asexually in the wild. Now, just really quickly, the anatomy of the polyp, we're talking, this is called the oral disc. It is often covered by tentacles. The tip of the tentacles contain the acrosphere. There is one single mouth, and usually there is some kind of a base with a foot. So, the first way that Corallomorpharians asexually reproduce is called budding. Now this can happen from a little bit of damage to the foot and what occasionally happens from a small laceration is the coral will produce a baby right here on the side and then once conditions, you know, the current increases or conditions change you end up finding this juvenile just floats right off and positions itself on the substratum to start a new polyp. The second type is called inverse budding. This one is a little bit com complicated to understand. So it's when, it's very similar to this concept, but when the end of the foot actually folds up and the fold where it attaches will then initiate that budding. So you'll end up having a similar effect but it's just termed a different way. Third type is called longitudinal fission. Now this one is really relevant to the way we tend to frag corals because it means when the polyp actually starts ripping from the mouth all the way across to become two polyps. There is a very unique way that is covered by this term called two mouth fission and that is when you end up with two mouths and then very slowly you end up uh, with the polyp splitting from the center outward to become two polyps. So longitudinal fission can take between days and weeks to occur in the aquarium. However, if it's a two mouth event, it can take two whole months. So this tends to be the actual longest way that Corallomorpharians can multiply asexually. Over here to the blue one, the one that we tend to be most familiar with in our hobby is called pedal laceration. And slowly but surely, Corallomorphs can move because of currents or because they're, they're positioned on a particular slope or because of weather and this very slight movement tends to leave little pieces of the foot behind on the substrate. Now this ends up being left behind and where that foot is left it 
starts to generate its own energy through the zooxanthellae and photosynthesis, creates a mouth and becomes a daughter polyp. The last method is called transverse fission. And this is actually when very strong current or conditions causes the polyp to stretch, twist, and the top comes off and lands for uh, to make a daughter polyp. So covering the five different natural methods of asexual reproduction is actually quite relevant to knowing how to frag Corallomorpharians. So now let's head over to the prop room and we'll show you some tips and tricks on how we like to frag them. So now for the fun part, welcome to the prop room. Here is where all the magic happens, where we put coral to grow out once it's been propagated and also sometimes in the way of recovery, if it's been stung or if people bring us a tank takedown, uh, this is where it is. So part of when you grow out a colony of coral, you end up succeeding like this. It starts to cover the rock work. It may become almost invasive. So with something like this, it's a great opportunity to share these morphs with your fellow reefing friends. Um, before you get started with propagation, you're probably best to find a couple of polyps that you remove from the rock so you're not directly propagating them on the actual base rock. So with this one, I'm using coral snippers. I've got a pair of anti-cut gloves, just in case something comes out of the rock. We have a bath of natural seawater here. And with our coral snips, we're able to simply remove <laughs> the individual polyps to really focus on a few different methods of propagation. Let's just put that back. So for the purpose of today's fragging demonstration, we have a couple of great examples of Corallomorpharians. Here we have Rhodactus indosinensis, which is called a fluffy morph. This variant is actually called a green hulk morph. We have Rhodactus incoata, a couple of cheap Recordia and some Discosoma. The easiest way to multiply a polyp is to simply cut it in half. We're going to do this on this Rhodactus here. It's important to take the cut right through the mouth uh, so that the healing process begins very quickly. So you can see here, locate the mouth. We've got a nice flat base here. So we're just gonna take our very clean blade and cut it in two. Now with this, it's quite an easy cut. If you really wanted to, you could do multiples, possibly even up to four. And then we use our new coral snips to split the base of the plug. Oh. <laughs> and there you have two pieces. I'll just clean that up. Lovely. So I like to put the corals in a dip after they've been cut, just to help with preventing any infection. Just for about a minute with Corallomorphs. They've got such soft, sensitive tissue. Probably don't want to leave them in there too long. I'll just put them in here for when we go to the gluing procedure. One really cool system that we use here in Australia, we call it foot pup cuts. Now, I haven't really seen a lot of other people do this other than us down under here. So that's really why I wanted to share. Looking here at this Rhodactus incoata, it's pedal base has extended a little beyond the initial stalk. Now this is a good example of what I call asking for a foot pup cut 
<laughs> so we're going to take it over here to the cutting board, get our blade, and we're not going to cut into the actual stalk, but simply just a small cut here across that extended part of tissue. And I think one more, we'll do one more here. To really get the benefit out of this method, ideally, you're best off to separate, we'll have probably two babies from this, so separate the foot pup cut from the parent polyp. What can occur if you actually put that back with the cut in the aquarium is that the, the cut joins back onto the parent colony um, and continues to take all the energy and nutrition from the parent polyp. By putting it either on an angle to allow that detached part to start generating its own energy through photosynthesis or removing it like this, you're pretty much guaranteed that that is going to start first, it's going to photosynthesize and then it's going to create its own mouth and then it's just easy from there. You just need to feed it to grow it up. Here's an example of a foot pup cut I took earlier, about a fortnight ago from this Recordia Yuma. And you can see here now, it's certainly become totally independent of the parent colony. And it's, we've got a good opportunity to just cut it and put it on its own, on its own tile for sharing with other hobbyists. So once you have your pieces cut up, dipped and ready to mount, we have a bit of an awesome solution here at Gallery Aquatica. We have devised these Morph and Recordia Hospitals. These are a 3D printed little container which come with a clear mesh lid. It actually has a really good system, it won't fall off. It doesn't quite screw on, but there is a divot here which helps. And a really unique feature versus using any old container is this hole at the base, which allows us, once we've put the polyp in, to easily pop it out of the base and uh, use the trap again. We're just gonna put some glue down on some of these tiles before we mount them. We like to soak all the tiles before use. You can use just a quick dab with a towel so you don't get too much water. Today we're using CG, it's an Ecotech glue. One of our favorites because it's so gelatinous, never fails, very strong glue. So we're going to put down our recordia. We've got that Superman Rodactus. And for that little foot pop cut, I'm actually going to get a little technical and even split it out into two. For that Hulk morph, because it's very, very popular. Lovely. One thing I like to do at this stage is to top down, pour a bit of water onto the glue to set it. That way, if you get that little skin, it doesn't go into your dip bucket or into your main aquarium. It also keeps the coral nice and wet and stress-free during the fragging procedure. And so now <clears throat> we simply put the tiles into their respective hospitals. 
pop on the lids. We sell these things for six dollars, so they're certainly not going to break the bank. Very useful little tool for anyone who is fragging morphs, as we call them, or shrooms, as you may call them. And then you can put them down to be set before putting them in your main display. So particularly for Recordia and Rhodactus, which tend to grow a little larger, or the initial polyp size might be a little larger and taller, we have the Recordia hospitals. Um, so I've split a couple of Rhodactus here and on a larger tile. We're just going to fit them in exactly the same way. Put that down. We've dipped them. So they're just going to go here into the bath. So here are some of the results from today's propagation session of Corella morpharians. We've got some beautiful Rhodactus, Recordia, Discosoma frags ready to go. I'm just going to go put them in our prop room uh, so they can grow out and heal. And in a number of weeks, I'm sure we'll be able to share them with our local reefers. Thank you so much for watching Gallery Aquatica TV today. We hope we've been able to help with some tips and tricks and see you next time. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and keep on reefing.